Hey guys, so it's June 2nd then. Um, very nice day today. It's around 65 degrees, maybe a little less. If you're sitting still, you get a little cool. But very nice day for work. And I uh, was cutting up some other stuff, some 12 foot stuff. And I have, um, I put another log on here, but when I measured it was only 11 foot. So I cut it down to 8 foot. And I'm going to put it on this pile here then to be able to put it into the kiln later on. So uh, the problem with it is it's kind of small, but it looks like it might be good lumber. So I'm expecting to get a, it's a 9 inch um, piece, 9 inches at the other end, the diameter. So that should give me a 6 inch by 6 inch cant, I'm hoping. So we'll see what happens here, see how good it looks when it's done. and. Uh, See what the boards look like if the boards are good as I think they are I'm gonna put them on that pile right there to be put into the kiln later okay so let's get the saw started up and we'll get going here red oak nine inches in diameter let's see what's going on here blowing out of the east which is not normal for here we were getting it from the north that's why we had the warm temperature or the cold temperatures the past couple days so uh, I'm imagining it's, oh, it's gonna warm up if it's coming out of the east or the south anyway this is some pretty good looking stuff got a knot right there but it's solid so we'll see what happens. I'll just cut that into a can and then cut it up into some boards.
glove had a little bend in it. So I might end up with uh, five boards out of it because of this bend right here. This isn't quite six inches at this spot. It's about five and three quarters. Let me just roll it again and take the block out. Got there's a six and a half by six and a half. So that half, half an inch um, should give me a little bit to get this wane off of here on the top. So I'm gonna roll it one turn so I can get the wane off. So both pieces of wane will be in one thing. Or I could start at the top and go down 
paint the weight on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I'll try that just for the heck of it. Alright, so the wing's on the bottom there now. over to the pile there one at a time. I've had that's for sure there's some marks and stuff in it but it's eight foot I'll get it into the kiln and clean it down after it's dry and everything but it could be better and I expect it by the time it gets to the center it might be even a little bit worse than that it's not the worst I've seen but it's not the best for sure
Now that's uh, four decks left there is two and an eighth inches. So I'll get two boards out of it. The only thing is that bottom board's gonna have a little wane on it. So I might have to cut it a little narrower. This has weighing on both sides of it there. Um, I could probably get like a one by three or something out of it, but I'm not gonna keep it. I'm not, I'm not into small pieces. So I'm gonna get rid of that and put it on the scrap pile, but I'll put the, the one on the left over on the lift or on the, on the uh, stocking pile. So that's what we got out of that log. Sometimes you, you know, you you look at a log, there's no branches on it. You think that you're gonna get a log without any knots, but you never know what's inside of it. And that's, this one had some stuff inside. Now there's a couple nice pieces there. That piece on the left is nice. And then there's the first one I cut off is pretty nice. So I'm not gonna worry about this other piece because it'll only end up being like a one by three of that. until you get the sap put off it or maybe less. So I'm gonna uh, get rid of that, put it on, on the pile for the uh, firewood guy. Phew, I hope it doesn't warm up too much. I really like this temperatures in the 60s. Have a good one. Hey guys, I just wanna show you something here yet. Now this isn't rocket science and I'm not, trying to show you any tricks at the moment. What I am gonna show you though is, if you've worked a lot with wood, and I have, or different beams and stuff, you can tell straight and crooked pretty quick. You know, and I mean, this is an exaggeration here, but what I'm getting at is, when you look at a log like this that you put on the sawmill, you know that this up is junk. You're not gonna get anything out of that. Unless you try cutting the log on an angle, that's a piece of scrap. But on the bottom, you can see it's straight. So technically, um, if you could lay this on the bottom on the bunk <coughs> rail to make your first cut, and then you'll get rid of this you know, piece at the stump end, it'll give you a better idea of what you're gonna end up with. Uh, people, a lot of people tell me that they cut from the big end uh, towards the saw head. <laughs> Excuse me. It doesn't matter to me where you cut it from. I just cut it from the small end because as I visualize what it's going to look like, I can tell right away from the small end. And, you know, that's up to you. You do whatever you want to do. I don't care what you do. I'm not going to argue about it. But um, if you see that there, you know, you, re you have to realize that that's not worth anything. So let me just grab a tape measure here and we'll measure that just to give you an idea how far off things can be. So this was the stump end and I got a measurement here of 15 and a half and here I have 16. But the log itself right here is only 12 and a half inches. So you can see there's four inches of wood there that's going to be unused. But it's, you know, it's really nothing. It's just like cutting it here, getting rid of that scrap. But the reason I brought this up is because if you can look at that and visualize that right away, 
you know, that helps you to set the log up to make your cut. Now, if you look over here, look at that big log there. there we don't have one of them over there, okay? That thing's straight from one end to the other. Now, that looks pretty nice to be able to put on. So you can put it on any way you want to and start making your cuts. But when you have something like this here that has the, uh, you know, the very end of the stump there and it's kind of wide, that messes you up as far as your cuts go. It's nice if this could have been cut, you know, here or even where this ended up. <coughs> when, <coughs> excuse me, when they first um, cut it for me, but... You have to cut within 12 inches of the ground, I believe it is, and for the um, DCNR here, or whatever they're called in Pennsylvania. But anyway, um, that's why they cut them so low. But I'm just saying, you know, if you visualize that, you'll see right away that from here up is junk. So you can't really be measuring there. So just looking at that, I'd say about here. So if I measure from here up, then I've got 12 inches, which is basically, this is 12 and a half here. So that's what helps me to know how to set it up to make the cut quicker. It's just one of those things that once you get the hang of it, and there's no set rules, like you don't have to make the cut a certain way all the time. You can put that thing in the middle of two bunk rails and it won't affect you at all. But if you put it on the bunk rail, then it's going to affect you pretty badly. So, you know, then you'd have to pick the other end up or roll it or something to get to where you want to be. So, like I say, it's not that you have to follow this certain pattern that I'm talking about or this certain way of cutting. What I'm saying is you need to recognize it as you're looking at the log. As you, when you pick up the log to bring it onto the sawmill, you have to know what's going to happen when you put that log on the on this straight bunk. That's why I recommend the bunk be made level when you put it down. You know. Okay, guys, that's it. Have a good one.